We need to get better. There's no doubt about it. There's not those the, the last two weeks is not acceptable. It's just not acceptable, and we need to get better. What, what can be done? Is it changing everything up? Is it just small things that aren't being done? Or what can be done to improve that? We're working on some of those things now, and hopefully they'll show up on the next performance. Representative Stevens. Okay, I promise I'm not trying to get you fined, but my question is, what kind of conversation can be had about a player that has a targeting call that does not get ejected from the team? Is there a compromise that can be had there? I think there's something coming up in the rules that may, in the future, that may condone that. Is that the correct word? I think there's something coming up in the rules in the future. Now, I, I do want to say this, though. Uh, I, saw the, I saw the targeting foul, and the call was legitimate. Okay, and it wasn't, it wasn't a helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. It had to do with the position of his of the crown of his head on a person's body. And you're talking about one of our team leaders, you're talking about one of our MVPs, you're talking about one of our team captains, and you're talking about someone that's not only extremely responsible, okay, but someone that does it the right way. And I'll, you know, I told him the way he hit that young man was not safe for him. The young man got up and was fine. But it wasn't safe for him. And it's a happening for our, for our player. He does not strike people like that. And he strikes a lot of people. But it's the first time that I've seen him in that position. And I was not happy. Because that's a good part of that rule. We don't, we don't want our guys playing with extremely fanatical effort and to be striking people in that position. That is not, not how we teach it. And that's not how he normally performs it. With people moving and all kind of stuff, do I consider it a happening? Yes, I do. But that was dangerous, okay? And it's a big price to pay, but by the, by the way the rule is written and what the rule is written for and the position that he was in, he was wrong, okay? So it's a happening. I expect him to be super, super better, and I don't expect it to happen again in his career. And we use it as a teaching point for everybody else on defense. We do not want you to be in that position. That's not a healthy position to be in when you're tackling someone. Steve, and then Tommy. Uh, I'll just make sure to follow up on Brent first. But Mike, Mike Howell's okay? Yeah. I was just making sure. I mm -hmm. understand where you're coming from. Um, I wanted to ask you about recruiting, particularly on the offensive side of the ball. How has the pivot you've made in season affected who you're, who you're looking at and the traits that you value in prospects? No pivot whatsoever. We're still going after the exact same individuals, same people who are committed, still going after guys that were on our uh, list and new people as well. Would you say you're less inclined to bring in a traditional pocket passer? I would say that anybody that's capable of moving the football, if they're exceptional, whether they're a drop back or, or a drop back or a movement quarterback, the key word is being exceptional. And same thing as far as offensive linemen, too. It's not like you're looking for more road graders based on what you're doing. No, if we could keep the guys healthy who we got, they seem like they've been road grading just fine enough. We just got to keep them out there on the football field. Tommy and Nate. Hey, Coach, do you notice, have you noticed in your coaching career after uh, a loss like that that the more veteran players respond differently than, say, uh, the true freshmen? Absolutely. Absolutely. The more veteran players understand that their time is coming to an end and how important every single contest is. Uh, younger players, they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, and sometimes they may take a game or two for granted. That's just human nature, young people versus older people. But the key is to get everyone to have the same train of thought, to understand how important each one of the 12 games is as an individual game which gives you an opportunity if you play it, play the game the right way and you play it well, and if you're blessed, then you get an opportunity to play a 13th game or a 14th game or a 15th game, depending on who you are. But it's different than other sports. You know, you, you can be flat 10, 12 games in basketball and you can still make it to the tournament, you can still make the Sweet 16. Football's not like that. You get 12 opportunities and you have to be right most of the time if you're gonna have an opportunity to go to postseason. Back up 
Okay. Someone came up and gave it to me. Mm-hmm. So, not actually my possession. It belongs to the universe. Sure. Uh -oh. okay. All right. So, uh, hoping maybe I caught you on a day where you're inclined to talk about future rule changes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, as I understand it, you're going to get some some roster relief in this upcoming recruit cycle for guys who transfer out of your program. You're going to be allowed to sign seven additional guys. But as I understand. I don't know if it's going to read exactly the way you said it, so I, I don't want to comment on it. It's a little bit, the question you're asking is a little bit different than the one that Brent asked, and I, I felt I could go there with him. I don't feel comfortable going there with you, because it, it, there's still some other things involved in what you said that I'm not sure you guys are aware of. Is the, is the seven, is that coach's recommendation that you guys talked about? It came from somewhere else, not the coaches. Okay. That all the numbers. The numbers do not come from the coaches. Okay, it came from somewhere else. Hey, Coach. Uh, last week, Marcus Paul was named to the ACC Football Honors class. Just was wondering what his lasting impact was on the Syracuse University football program. You know, I've heard stories about Marcus. I don't think it's really appropriate, and do I feel comfortable talking totally about it? I would ask you to go and, and talk to the guys that actually knew him personally. I, I heard the stories, and, and I know about all his deeds. But I really wouldn't do him justice. Uh, I could recommend a, uh, oh my God, Coach Will. I mean, there, there's individuals that you can talk to him about that do much, much better than myself. Mark and then Roshan. Coach, when your team gets back on the practice field uh, tomorrow, what should we be looking for from them to let you know that? Practice is going to be really interesting on Tuesday. Everybody that shows up needs to understand that it's going to be extremely interesting. Can you elaborate on that? They need to understand that it's going to be extremely interesting for everybody that shows up. Okay. Roshan and Callum. Not much. I mean, they look like they, they don't want people to run the ball at all, and they force people to throw the football. So we're working right now. I was stuck, stopped, came down for this press conference, and I'll go back up there again. There's a lot of work to be done. It's a good football team that stops the run. And did you have a conversation with any of your coaches or, or I guess thoughts going through your head in terms of pulling Tucker and Schrader at some point during that, that third quarter or that fourth quarter? No, I did not talk to my coaches about – pulling Tucker and pulling Schrader in the fourth quarter. I pulled Tucker and I pulled Schrader in the fourth quarter. And then Tucker came back and had a conversation with me. And then I put him back in because that's what he wanted. And if he wanted to go back into that game, then he sure wasn't going back into that game himself, that Schrader was going to go with him. And if Schrader was going to go back with him, then the offensive line was going to go back with me. And it was a very private conversation between him and I. And I don't think he went back in for records. I think he went back in for some stuff that was unbelievable. And you're talking about a young man in two years has never came up and talked to me in the middle of a game. But I pulled him. And then he came over and had a conversation with me. Two years he's never had a conversation with me during a football game. And based off of that conversation, he was put back in the game. Not for records, for other things, which are private. Fair enough. Does that speak to his growth as a person, his relationship with you, or, or anything like that? Or it speaks to me. That I've never had a player of his qual quality wanting to go back into a game like that. The last time I had a conversation with somebody like that during a game was Jimmy Garoppolo in 2013. And when you have players that good, doing things that normally players like that wouldn't want to do, I'm going to always go with that player, regardless of what happens on the field and what I have to deal with in this press conference for doing it. 
I'm a player's coach. That's the way I'm going to go. Speak about the lack of physicality in the game against Louisville. Um, what role is bye week playing that? You know what? It's interesting because the bye week is something for you to heal so that you can be physical. That we healed and we weren't. What a concept. What a dilemma. Steven and Thomas? So going back to, I guess, this recruiting cycle and, and maybe some uncertainties with transfers and scholarship allotments, what approach are you guys taking from a numbers perspective? I feel like your commitment number right now is maybe a little less than it would be this time of the year. Like, are you expecting to take a bunch of transfers? I wouldn't say expecting it. You've got to play both sides of the fence. You know, we're trying to recruit the best players we can because they'll stay in your program longer. When you look for a lot of transfers, you're not, you don't know exactly what you're going to get. There's only a reason why people are in the transport, transfer portal. And the ones that, uh, that don't normally have a lot of reasons sometimes are past our reach. So you really have to do a lot of research. Okay, I'd much rather have a, a younger kid that I knew two or three years what he's been doing for the last two or three years than someone that's been in someone else's program. Well, I guess the issue that, that potentially pops up, depending on how many guys you have, is to, to have – if you use those extra scholarships on high school players, you, you continually have young rosters. Um, are you doing anything to maybe better gauge how many guys might be might be leaving? And I guess in turn, you know, seeing how the, the experience balance is affected by that? We're, we're tracking all that stuff, and, we're, and it's a moving thing as it goes. It's a slide ruler as it goes, okay? Slide ruler. Brent, help him out on that one. <laughs> <laughs> So it, it's got a lot of moving parts, but yes, we're tracking all that stuff and the balance of the, of the roster, whether it's old or young, where you want to go with it. How are you going to Do you know, what does it say about a program like NC State that picks up their third loss and still finds them ranked in the top 25? Program? Good program, good coach. Dave Dorn does a fantastic job. He's one of the guys, I really do like him. He's really uh, level-headed. We've exchanged uh, concepts about football teams and, and, and how you build them. And uh, he's somebody I enjoy having conversation with. I think he is a, uh, an old-fashioned coach, which I like to think that I'm in that same category. And we kind of look at things the same way for the most part. So I know that that's a good football team. And uh, to their credit, to have three losses and still be in the top 20, I think is outstanding. When you have these conversations with other head coaches, do you ever find yourself almost biting your lip because you're talking so much football with each other that you almost feel like you're about to give something away? No. You know, if, you're, if you've had a lot of those conversations, the last thing you do is give something away. But you, there's certain things that uh, football coaches can talk about, just the generality of things, just to, you know, to see if, you're, some of them, if they're having some of the same issues or concepts I mean, or problems with their young people that you're having with yours. And uh, everybody's trying to get a hold of this generation and, and try to find out what makes them tick. But uh, I think that uh, head football coaches and coaches in general probably know them a little bit better than the average Joes, to tell you the truth, because we're around them all the time. It's time for two more, starting from the motion. Yeah, but I'll stay on the press all tomorrow. He's going to be back. Uh, not yet. Might be a good question to ask next week. Not yet. You know, first of all, you know, I don't comment on the guys that aren't on the team, but I love Dylan. And I will, I will say that uh, Dylan did it the right way and uh, voiced, his, voiced his, uh, his opinions and his concerns and was very mature about how he did it. And we wish him nothing but the best. What will you, like, if there's a pocket passing quarterback you like out there, what's, what's the message to them, right, to get them to come in? Uh, and I guess believe that this offense can succeed in that, in that fashion? Jimmy Garoppolo ran this offense, and the offense ran for Jimmy Garoppolo. If we have someone that has the ability 
to be an archer and hit exactly what they can hit with one of the fastest releases I've ever seen, which takes the place of their feet because they can actually take a ball and throw it somewhere before someone can hit them. It's just like having feet. So it comes down to how good at what they do to whether the offense bends one way or another for them. The coolest thing is having the flexibility to do both, which you have, means you have the ability to attract both types of players. Thank you, guys.